All right, it's day 37. It's been a very rough week for the fourth born last time. If you recall on day 30, I removed the second and third borns, thinking they were uh, polyembryonic seedlings that came out of the same seed, but they actually weren't. I thought this bug that's on here, I don't know if that's a leaf hopper or whatnot. It looked like a brown spot through the sliding door from a distance when I looked at this in the morning. So I thought this leaf, this plant was succumbing to root rot. I was very worried until I saw that it was just a bug. So the fourth born has most likely succumbed to root rot. I've had many days of cloudy, foggy, cold weather and it's been unseasonably cold for August. So that means a lot less soil evaporation and a lot less warmth. It was around 20 Celsius, maybe even less outdoors instead of the usual uh, 30 during the day or even hotter sometimes. So on day 33, I siphoned off the remaining water in the watering tray. I was thinking the possibility of root rot was real and based on these browning dead spots on the leaves, I think that's what happened here, although typically with other species I've noticed it's the edges and the tips that seem to die off. and Usually they become yellow or white, um, not quite brown like that. So it's a different set of symptoms and this seedling that I pulled last time that had the long red root, it died very quickly in the hydroponic setup. It looks totally gross I know. And at first, ants were using it as a bridge to get into the water and drink from that. But this endosperm dried out very quickly. The root, the bottom part that was soaked in the water, I think it's just all moldy. Basically, the root system stopped functioning. And that's what caused the shoot system to wilt, in my opinion. The endosperm was already very depleted. Well, it was at least halfway depleted coming out, but it soon dried out. So my theory is that the root system somehow stops working, gets shut off, and then the shoot system wilts, and then it'll start depleting the seed. So I'm going to excavate the root system of this fourth born and see what happened. It's a real pity, but I knew eventually there wasn't going to be enough room for even both of these plants in the same pot. This is a tree after all, so I imagine after a few months, these going into the winter, the firstborn is going to become very big. The foliage on both of these is a lot greener than it was last episode, although it still looks somewhat yellowish green compared to the firstborn. So I heard a snap. The root system on this is much more robust than the second born and third born that I pulled a week ago. So the bottom of this broken off root is reddish but the rest is blackened. That's sort of the same symptom of the previous ones that I pulled in which uh, it just blackens off and ceases to function so water can no longer be transported. It might be some kind of fungal infection that just shuts off uh, the vascular system of the plant but the endosperm is very very supple and round it seems like a charged battery almost in comparison to what I excavated last week with the second born and third born so I think the plant has no reason to spend what's in the endosperm if it can get all the water and macro and micronutrients that it can and needs from the soil so I still think fertilizing uh, right away, right even as you're trying to germinate is definitely the way to go. I don't subscribe to the theory that you could just grow these in sand or a nutrient-less medium with no fertilization and expect them to get to any appreciable size. I think they would do horribly and then no sperm would just be depleted. So the potting mix felt wet and cold to the touch because this is really the first direct sun we've had in days. It's been pretty rough. I've been very worried that without the direct sun there would be non-existent soil evaporation and therefore whatever root rot that I feared was going on in there would just be exacerbated and that I was going to lose potentially everything. 
but it seems like the firstborn is doing better than ever. All the foliage is really green. It's an emerald green. It's not quite as dark. The leaves aren't as thick, of course, as the passion fruit vine that looms in the background. And all my plants have basically suffered during this uh, marine layer cold stretch with no sun. So I imagine whatever germination projects I had underway might have been delayed as well. Although I'm hopeful with an upcoming stretch of sunny, warmer and warmer days, as far as I can see on the weather forecast, will really help out with everything. So other than what's already happened with the other seedlings, this firstborn really doesn't have any problems. I don't see any signs of plant parasitism um, by bugs or any kind of worms in the soil. I didn't see any fungus gnat larvae this time, and, you know, burrowing in and out and trying to uh, complete their life cycle to generate yet more fungus gnats. So the foliage is all green, but I didn't really notice growth until today. Seems like the plant was in a state of stasis, possibly fighting off um, the causes of death for the other three, which is either root rot. Either that or they've all been fighting each other through chemical warfare. That's still a plausible explanation. And this one won out. So with the last remaining seedling forcibly removed by me just now, this should dominate and grow very quickly right after this, especially with the warm days coming up. So I think things are starting to look up. Uh, the soil should dry out for another week and then I'll evaluate as to whether I should add some more fertilizer and water again but going forward I definitely won't water as much as I did before despite the growing size of this seedling just because I don't want to have a situation where I lose it so I'm fairly confident that things will work out and thanks for watching this episode and please stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further updates on growing mango trees from seeds.